Welcome, welcome to the best five minute wine podcast. I'm your host, Forrest Kelly. From the sea to the glass, wine has a past. Our aim at the best five minute wine podcast is to look for adventure at wineries around the globe. After all, grape minds think alike. Let's start the adventure. Our featured winery is. We conclude our interview with Michael Jurgens, who is bringing the first vineyard to the kingdom of Bhutan. So you've been working on this project for some time now, Michael. Where are we in the time frame of getting your product into the bottle? Well, so if we make our first bottling next summer, then the whites would be available kind of early 2023 and the reds would be available kind of mid-2023. We don't necessarily know exactly how the wines are going to shape out though. So we may want to do more experimental fermentations like micro ferments the first year just to get a sense of how the, the grapes are developing different vineyards. So best case scenario, you know, whites will be available in about 18 months. Worst case, you know, 30 months. I actually have a really cool idea and I'll, I'll, I haven't shared this with anybody yet. So we'll break it live on your, on your podcast. Oh, wow. Never had breaking news before. Okay. Hang on a second, Michael. Let me, uh, let me find my breaking news sound effect. Where is it? Okay, here we go. Breaking news. Think about this. If you had the first bottle of wine ever commercially produced in America, like what would that bottle be worth? I mean, that bottle would be in the Smithsonian. Here it is, the very first bottle ever produced in America or in France or in Australia or wherever. That the first bottle would be important. You know, we, we missed the mark by hundreds of years in most countries. But I'm doing that. I'm going to make the first bottle. So I want to, the very first thing that we're going to do is make one barrel, which will be the first barrel. And then we're going to bottle those wines in a special bottling and and kind of sell those to collectors who want to have a piece of the first barrel ever produced in a country of of wine, which I think is kind of cool. First of all, I want to thank you for that uh, breaking news. I think that's a great idea to plan that out. And it just might be lucrative for you as well, because... Looking at some of the most expensive wines sold, you've got uh, charity cases sometimes, uh, half a million dollars, French wine, a bottle, a single bottle, 300,000 plus. Do you have any idea who might be interested in buying the first case or the first wine from the country of Bhutan? I would guess it would be places like, you know, the Wine Museum in Adelaide, Australia, um, you know, people who... The, the collectors like the Koch brothers, I don't know if they would be interested or not, but you know, the, the, the Koch brothers have historically bought interesting bottles of wine, like, like, you know, the famous fake Thomas Jefferson bottles and so on and so forth. So I think it would be one of those wines that you would not open, right? You would save. And obviously the, the very first bottle we would probably give to, you know, or the first few bottles in the series would probably go to the country itself for them to save and posterity state in their museums. I wanted to ask you about uh, highest elevation where some countries and vineyards profess that they have the highest. Reminds me of a question from Alice of Muskogee, Oklahoma, who's a listener to the podcast, and she asked... I'm interested in knowing how different grapes and different grow based on different climates and different altitudes and how that affects the different quality of wine produced. That's a good question. So what is your take on focusing on the elevation, not focusing on the elevation? So there's a huge debate about that. Um, the Argentinians would say they've got the, the tallest. There's one in Tibet that's about 11,000 feet. They would say that they've got the tallest. There's a lot of arguments about it. I could definitely have the tallest vineyard, the highest altitude vineyard in the world if I wanted to, very easily. But to me, I think that's sort of a like a gimmick. And my goal is to not do gimmicky stuff. My goal is to try to capture the beauty of Bhutan in a wine bottle and share it with the world. And if that happened to align with the perfect plot at 13,000 feet, I would plant it in a heartbeat, but I don't I don't think that it will. We've got the tallest, yeah. Like we'll, we'll leave that to the people who wanna do that sort of gimmicky marketing stuff. And But hey, you know, we're still dialing things in and figuring out what works well where. So we may find that there's an awesome ice wine vineyard that we can plant the doll at you know 13,000 feet and it makes this glorious ice wine and if, if so then yeah I'll do it but not because it's high thank you for listening I'm Forrest Kelly 
This episode of the Best 5-Minute Wine Podcast was produced by iHism. If you like the show, please tell your friends and pets and subscribe. Until next time, pour the wine and ponder your next adventure. This is Doug Vincent with the podcast Walk and Roll Live, Disability Stories. In 1956, I contracted polio. Thanks to my loving parents, I've lived a full, rich life over the past 67 years. Join me as I share my journey and uncover inspiring stories of resilience. This podcast is a platform for survivors of disability and those who champion services for the disabled community. Tune in on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, whatever your favorite podcast platform is. Let's walk and roll together on this incredible journey of strength and empowerment.